Crypto is an exciting space with a lot of opportunities. It's really revolutionized the way that we store money, pay for goods and services, and do business. Crypto honestly has the power to transform the world, but with great power comes great responsibility. And you, and only you, are responsible for your own crypto assets. So like Beast of Honey, the increasing popularity and value of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies make it attractive to criminals. According to a report by security firm Barracuda Networks, the volume of Bitcoin cyber attacks surged to 200% during the recent bull run. In this same period, the Federal Trade Commission reported that 7,000 people lost more than $80 million. So if you're not careful, you risk having your valuable cryptocurrencies stolen away from you. Basically, if you own any crypto, this video is for you. So here are our top 15 tips to secure your cryptocurrencies. Hey, it's Girl Gone Crypto here with CoinGecko, and thanks for tuning in. So if you're not already familiar, CoinGecko is the world's largest independent cryptocurrency data aggregator. Now, CoinGecko has been providing a comprehensive overview of crypto markets since 2014 and is the trusted source of information for millions of cryptocurrency investors. So if you'd like to stay updated on all things crypto, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Also, you can follow along on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for all the latest crypto updates. So without further ado, let's get to the first tip. Number one, never reuse passwords. Have you ever wondered how hackers manage to get into accounts so easily? Well, the reason is simple. Most people use the same passwords over and over again. And once a password has been leaked online, it is easy for a hacker to do a quick lookup to find your password. According to Statista, the number of data breaches in 2020 in the United States came in at a total of 1,001 cases, affecting over 150 million people. LinkedIn, Evernote, Tumblr, and Yahoo are some of the large password leaks we've seen in the past few years. Now, if you're curious to see if one of your passwords have been linked previously, you can visit haveibeenpawned.com and check if your credentials have been compromised. But basically, this is just really why it's important to always use unique passwords. Number two, use a password manager. So if you need to use a unique password for each website, how on earth do you remember them all? I mean, I don't have a massive dictionary up here in my brain to remember all of these random alphanumeric passwords for the hundreds of online services that I sign up for. But don't worry, the solution is actually really simple. You just use a password manager like 1Password or LastPass to generate long, unique, and strong passwords for your online services. And so you only need to remember the master password and then the password manager handles the rest. Number three, secure your mobile phone. Now there have been many instances of people having their SIM swapped and then having their SMS-based two-factor authentication reset by hackers. It is not fun being locked out of your Gmail, Facebook, or other online accounts. And this is especially prevalent for US telcos where there have been many incidences of SIM jacking. So SIM jacking is essentially taking control of someone's phone number and tricking the mobile carrier into transferring it to a new phone. So I'd recommend that you just take some time to really secure your mobile numbers by following this guide from Kraken. Number four, 2FA everything. Have you ever wondered why your bank forces you to key in a six digit code from your mobile phone each time you want to make a bank transaction? Well, that six digit code is known as two factor authentication and is the second method to prove that you are who you really say you are. So for example, a hacker may have your password, but he may not have your mobile phone and this makes it harder for him to make a fraudulent bank transaction. So to make your online account secure, you should activate two factor authentication, also commonly referred to as 2FA for every device device that offers it. They use apps like Google Authenticator or Authy to store your 2FA codes. And if you're using Authy, back it up on another device, then turn off multiple device sharing. The codes stay with the app and are not connected to your mobile carrier. It's just safer and faster. And as mentioned in the previous tip, don't, and I repeat, do not use those SMS based ones as it's susceptible to SIM jacking. So with that, they're able to access your 2FA codes without needing your physical phone. Number five, consider using a hardware-based 2FA. So better yet, if you have the funds, consider upgrading to a hardware-based 2FA like Yubico, Google Titan, or Thetis. They are definitely worth the investment. Now, this changes your 2FA from an app to a physical USB device that you'll need to authenticate before logging in. You basically treat this device as a key to your house and keep them safe and secure. So for many people, these devices are probably easier to use than Google Authenticator or Authy. 
Number six, use a crypto hardware wallet. So if you have crypto on MetaMask or other wallets, you really should use a hardware wallet like Trezor or Ledger. A hardware wallet stores your private keys in a secure hardware device rather than online. Now, a hardware wallet only costs about $70, and with a hardware wallet, you prevent hackers from snooping around your online wallet and spending your cryptocurrencies. Without using a hardware wallet, you're just kind of waiting for a hacker to take away all your coins one day. So it's honestly worth it to spend the money to invest in one. Um, if you do decide to get a hardware wallet, check out the CoinGecko Candy Rewards where you can claim discounts from several of the industry's leading wallets. You can visit the CoinGecko website or app daily to collect candies and you can use these to redeem discounts on goodies from their partners as well as an opportunity to enter exclusive competitions. So there's a link in the description box to check out the candy rewards and while you're at it, hit the like and subscribe button down below if you want to see more content like this. Number seven, secure your wallet seed phrase. When creating a wallet, you'll get a randomized 12 word backup phrase. This is called a seed phrase and it's very, very important. So keep it secure and never ever give it to anyone. No, no one will ever request it. Like there's no telegram or email support from any crypto app that will request this information from you. Giving out the seed phrase is akin to giving scammers the keys to your bank vault. So don't store them on any online devices like Dropbox, email, or anywhere online. Keep it safe by writing it down on a notebook and keeping that notebook safe. Better yet, store it with metal seed backup tools like CryptoSteel or Kobo Tablet to protect your seed phrase from being destroyed by fire, water, and human tampering. Number eight, uninstall all Chrome extensions. Now, Chrome extensions are useful to help improve productivity, but did you know that some extensions may be rogue? They may have excessive permissions to read your data. So unless you absolutely 100% trust the developer, we would advise that you uninstall them all. It's just really not worth the risk. But if you must use a Chrome extension, then separate out your MetaMask extension to its own browser profile. This is so that your wallet stays on a different profile from your other extensions. And you can create multiple profiles for all the different wallet extensions you need to use. Number nine, limit smart contract approvals. So when you use MetaMask and interact with smart contracts on Ethereum, BSC, or Polygon, don't give unlimited token approvals. You never know which smart contract may end up going rogue and draining all of your token balances. So always customize the spend limit to the amount that you want to send. And you can do this by clicking edit on permission. Doing so is safer because if a smart contract has an unlimited spend limit, say USDT, it can drain your your entire USDT balance if the contract is malicious. So in February this year, Fu Kumbo was subjected to this exploit and over $14 million worth of tokens were stolen by hackers. Number 10, don't dox yourself. Whenever possible, use an exchange to send crypto funds to someone else. Doxing is the act of revealing identifying information about someone online, such as their real name, home address, workplace, phone, financial, and other personal information. So in this case, every time you send funds from your wallet to another person, you dox your address, and the recipient can see your crypto balance and your entire transaction history. Your recipient can save your address and see all of your future your transactions too. Now, this is not something that we want, right? So imagine having your friend know what your bank balance is after you send him $10 via bank wire. Number 11, don't click on ads. So let's play a little, can you spot the scam? So look at these phishing ads targeting my Ether wallet. Notice the difference? The phishing ads impersonate my Ether wallet to trick you into clicking them. So make it a habit to never click on ads, especially Google search ads. There have been many instances of scammers buying ads on crypto keywords to fish your seed phrase and credentials from you. Google used to ban crypto ads, but they recently reversed this ban, so there may be more scam ads appearing again. Number 12, never download or open files from strangers. I mean, this probably goes without saying, never open up any random files you receive in an email or text from strangers. I mean, your mom told you to never take candy from a stranger, so don't download files from random strangers either. Uh, you never really know which file will end up installing a keylogger and infecting your computer with all sorts of harmful stuff. Number 13, be careful of giveaway tweets and DMs. 
Have you seen one of those ads that say, hey, send me 0.01 BTC and I'll send you 0.02 BTC back? Well, have you ever wondered how that works or maybe you was tempted to think maybe it does work? No, they are definitely scams. Like no one is going to just send you free Ether BTC with you sending to them first. There are tons of such scam giveaway tweets, DMs, YouTube ads, and Facebook comments. So as a basic rule of thumb, if it is too good to be true, it probably is. Number 14, be careful with cold emails. All right, it's time for another round of can you spot the scam? <laughs> so take a look at the email here. I mean, it looks pretty legit, right? This is a more sophisticated scam. So when you receive emails, always check the from address to see what address the recipient is sending from. Is it from the correct domain or a phishing domain? So some are pretty obvious to check. For example, a phishing email claiming to be from Coinbase, but has an email from john at notcoinbase.com is a pretty obvious scam. However, However, scammers have registered special characters representing crypto domains and it can be really hard to spot. So for example, take a look at the following two domains here on screen, coingecko.com and coingecko.com, but pay close attention to the K and the I. Look how they're slightly different. So any emails from these senders are scams. All right, on to our final and last point. Number 15, use a VPN on public Wi-Fi. First off, you really shouldn't be transacting with crypto while connected to a cafe public Wi-Fi. You really never know if the provider of the Wi-Fi network is snooping on your internet traffic. But if you must, use a VPN like ExpressVPN or NordVPN. So VPNs or virtual private networks encrypt your internet traffic and disguises your online identity. So this just makes it difficult for third parties to track your activities online and steal your data. Again, for this, check out the CoinGecko Candy Rewards. You can grab yourself some really great deals from industry-leading VPN services. And then just a final note on VPNs, I'd recommend checking out this interesting write-up by Taylor Monaghan on security. So check that out. The link is in the description box and basically just follow everything she recommends. Yes, securing your accounts comes with costs, but it won't cost nearly as much as losing all of your precious crypto holdings. We really hope that you found these tips helpful. If you have any other suggestions for security best practices, please do share them in the comment section below and let's make the crypto space safer for everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more crypto tips and news.